Sometimes, natural selection doesn't work the way we often think it does. Instead of selecting for the most successful variation, it selects for variation itself. This is the eyelash viper, a tree-dwelling venomous snake found in Central and South America. It's known for its namesake head scales and for coming in a stunning variety of colors. And until very recently, eyelash vipers were thought to be all one widely distributed species with a whole lot of color morphs. But it turns out that they're more like five to nine different species. Which might make it seem like we've got them all figured out. If they're different snakes, of course they're different colors. Except that's not it. Each species comes in a rainbow of colors, even within the same litter. So how does that work? If you want to support the channel, the Bizarre Beast Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. Sign up by August 20th, and the first pin you will get will be this gorgeous eyelash viper. Humans have struggled with the identity of the eyelash viper, also known as the eyelash palm viper, for a long time. Between the mid-19th and early 20th century, it was identified as four to five different species. But over time, these were mostly boiled down to Bothricus schlegelii, which was considered a single species that just happened to have a boatload of visible variation. And this conclusion was accepted for many, many years. But new research has split this species back up again to include not only B. schlegelii and updated reinstatements of those original species descriptions from way back when, but also five newly described species too. So how did we end up with over a century of disagreement about how many different kinds of vipers these were? Along with rattlesnakes, eyelash vipers belong to a group called pit vipers due to the heat-sensitive pits between their eyes and nostrils, which help them hunt. They're ambush predators that typically live in tree canopies, vines, and other foliage to hide. As a result, their scales are rougher than on most snakes, possibly to protect them from pokey branches or to help them climb. The scales on their eyes that earn them their common name are believed to help obscure the silhouette of the viper's head while it hides. These specialized scales are typical of ambushing snake species, especially in environments with similar cover. These vipers are also relatively small for venomous snakes of the Americas, coming in at only 55 to 82 centimeters. But what really makes eyelash vipers so bizarre, and what made them so hard to classify for so long, is the amount of variation they exhibit, not just between species, but even between individuals of the same species. The different colors of eyelash vipers are likely for camouflage, helping the snakes both hunt and not be hunted. And these colors can vary not only with within a species, but even between siblings. This makes it understandably trickier to tell them apart. Color alone isn't enough to get a solid ID. And to make things even more complicated, studies of this snake have relied on very limited observations. Rainforests aren't the easiest places for humans to navigate, and the trees even less so. So the researchers in this latest study had to create their data set by collecting tissue and DNA samples from individuals, both alive and preserved, at over three dozen zoos and museums around the world. The snakes they sampled varied in color and other physical characteristics, but were all labeled B. schlegelii. The researchers used DNA analysis to divide them up into separate groups, and physical characteristics confirmed both similarities within those groups and differences between groups. And these were enough that the researchers could be confident in their description of the groups of vipers as truly distinct species. This is all well and good for at least settling the mystery of how many species there are, but it still doesn't explain why these snakes look so dang different even when they are related. It all comes down to something called color polymorphism, differences in coloration within the same species. Traditionally, we understand natural selection to mean a given trait being selected for over generations. So in a case like this, we could reasonably expect a specific color morph to provide a competitive advantage and thus become more common than the others. Instead, the variation itself has proven to be the real advantage, allowing the many different morphs to stand the test of time. That's how you end up with a polymorphic species. Color polymorphism seems to be disproportionately common in arboreal snake species, including the eyelash viper. And this might hold the answer as to why such a feature would stick around. The snake's canopy habitat is full of differences in both color and lighting, so there's no one-size-fits-all color pattern to help them blend in 
everywhere. This means that individuals with different color morphs can thrive in different parts of the same forest more successfully than if they all look the same. There's also the phenomenon of what's called frequency-dependent selection. Having a trait that's too common might make you too recognizable. For example, if your prey or potential predators get used to what you look like, you're a more obvious mark than if you can keep them guessing. These factors might explain the why of eyelash viper coloration, but how about the how? Color is often tied to clusters of similar genes that have important non-color functions. By being tucked away in these more necessary genes, the colors are likely to stick around even after many generations. Scientists have begun to identify some of these possible genes in Asian vine snakes, and the pretty minor mutations within them that can lead to such major variations in what color the snakes are. But all this variation raises a question. If so many of these vipers look so different, how do members of the same species even recognize each other to mate? They're probably better at telling species apart than we humans have proven ourselves to be, but how do they do it? Snake vision depends on the lifestyle and environment of the species in question. And for the eyelash viper, that means very sharp eyesight for its arboreal niche. So can they just see the different colors really well? Well, they do use their sense of sight in mating, but mostly for the purpose of watching a prospective partner's dance moves. Males compete in a display called the Dance of the Adders in order to intimidate one another and to win the chance to mate. The difficult step, finding mates in the first place, is more about chemical sensing and smell. This is the real key to these vipers recognizing members of their own species, in spite of the dramatic superficial differences that stump us humans. And although there aren't any studies of it in the eyelash viper, female preference in some species can actually help reinforce such pronounced polymorphism. It's a phenomenon called disruptive selection, and it's when individuals prefer mates at the extreme ends of the color ranges, and not just those who are in the middle. Scientists are still working to better understand how color polymorphism works in general, but the eyelash viper at least presents a nice case study for learning more. So what do we take from all of this? That this snake is cool looking and that it's confused scientists? Sure, the eyelash viper's uniquely huge color palette has made species identification pretty challenging, but this fact may actually have major implications for viper conservation. A healthy array of different color morphs might be a sign of an especially diverse gene pool, which could give a species an edge when it comes to surviving extreme change. Evolutionarily, older snake species are also more likely to be polymorphic than species that have branched off more recently. So variety is believed to have at least helped them make it through tough times. But the discovery that the eyelash viper isn't just the one species we thought it was tells us that it might not have quite so big a toolkit for surviving the accelerating human-caused habitat loss that they're now facing. A single species with tons of variation and a wide geographic range? Even with deforestation in parts of its habitat, that'll still earn you a least concern status on the IUCN red list. But if that geographic range instead houses multiple smaller populations of different species, all independently experiencing habitat loss and fragmentation, suddenly we're looking at potential extinction risk for almost half of them. And that means that something as seemingly esoteric as the accurate taxonomic classification of a technical or tree snake may actually be the first step toward protecting these beasts so they can keep on being bizarre. Sign up for the pin club at bizarrebeastshow.com to keep this channel going. If you want the Viper to be your first pin, sign up by August 20th. The pin art for the rest of the year is so good, so don't miss out. We've also got fun new eyelash viper socks over at complexly.store, where a big summer sale is going on now. You can get up to 40% off Bizarre Beast merch like these signed Emily Grassley prints, our Kakapo 3D printed figurine, and this locust sticker sheet. And now for some bonus facts. 
We mentioned earlier that the eyelash viper's rainbow of colors helps these snakes blend into a variety of different microenvironments within their forest homes. And some of the specific examples of this are pretty wild. Like, one of the places that yellow eyelash vipers like to hang out is on banana plantations. The fruits attract small animals like birds and bats, allowing the vipers to just sit and wait to ambush them. Their bright yellow scales blend in perfectly with the bunches of bananas, and they've even been accidentally shipped out in crates of bananas. Which, no thanks. I prefer my bananas snake-free. Red eyelash vipers, on the other hand, have been observed hiding in red bromeliads, waiting to prey on small amphibians. Another fact we learned while making this episode is that eyelash vipers can live up to 20 years in captivity, though they've only been estimated to live up to about 10 years in the wild. And lots of zoos have eyelash vipers because they are, frankly, just really great-looking snakes. Have you seen one at your local zoo or even cooler, in the wild? Let us know.